Hello everyone. In this uh, lab, we are going to investigate the typical file archiver, server and zip, and the typical software packer, UPX. UPX, uh, this UPX is optional. We learn uh, this uh, Tuesday backup software, employee file archivers or compressors and their fruit. So here are the tasks we need to complete in this uh, lab. If you didn't uh, install 7-zip and uh, UPX, uh, please open them in a new tab, download them and uh, install on your computer. Here for 7-zip, uh, download this 64-bit uh, and install on your computer. For this UPX, you can download the latest uh, release here, based on the operating system you are using, I suppose you use uh, Windows, so you might download this 64-bit uh, UPX and practice by yourself. I think we don't need this uh, UPX in the lab. The other tools we need in this lab is an AES script. So please also uh, download this uh, AES script and install on your computer. Here, I suppose you use Windows. You can check the download. Here it says how to use it. Once you install AES Encrypt, it creates an entry in the pop-up menu. You right click a file, then you can choose AES Encrypt to encrypt that file. And if it's encrypted, it will add an extension as .aes then you can choose a decrypt from its pop-up menu. And the down, you can also use a command line to do the encryption decryption. Here in this uh, download, based on the open system you are using, you can download this uh, AS script, like uh, the 64-bit and the command line 64-bit. So just install this uh, GUI is it good enough. Uh, okay, these are tools we are going to use uh, in this lab. Right now, uh, task one download the latest uh, Mac OS or uh, Calibri OS or Manual OS released in zip file, then extract it into a folder F. So the uh, F is just a valuable name used to name this folder. You can use any name. Okay, now inside my documents, I would like to create a folder. This is uh, lab 09. Maybe uh, lab 09. Okay, this uh, folder is used to hold all the files. You download this uh, Mac OS. So this is a download, there is a zip file. So I download this zip file. It's only a 447 kilobytes. This is Mac OS. There's Ctrl X to cut it and paste in this uh, lab 09. Ctrl V paste here. Then use a 7Z to unzip it. We can open the archive to have a look first. You see it contains a, a single folder. So we can just extract it here. So extract here. We get a folder called macOS-4.6.1. And then folder, we, we refer it as a folder F. This is a step one. Step two, use seven Z zip GUI or command line to apply all possible compression methods or the compression algorithms onto the folder F above. And in archive format 7Z or zip separately. So we need to choose the two archive format. Then draw a table to compare all compressions 
and use the highest compression level for each and keep all other options as default. So your table should contain nine possibilities for each. For the 7Z, the application compression methods include these four methods zip, include these uh, four methods. And for each possibility, list the uh, compressed file size, compression ratio, and space saving. How do we do this, calculate this compression ratio and the space saving? Follow this link. Here, compression ratio equals uncompressed size divided by compressed size. And this uh, space saving equals one minus the compressed uh, size divided by this uh, uncompressed size. Okay, we need to create a table here, four methods here, five methods total, there are nine possibilities. So we can, uh, we may use uh, LibreOffice or your Microsoft uh, Office. Uh, and check whether I store LibreOffice or not. Uh, zero nine. A new uh, file here you see I have uh, open document text so this is, is uh, generated when I install LibreOffice here you can say this is your report lab 09 report in this report how do you create that table You may create a table looks like this. Here we have uh, two archival formats. And uh, how many columns do we need? We need uh, the compressed file size, compression ratio, space saving, together with this uh, archival format. So we have four columns and nine rows. Okay, I think uh, that's what we need. So four columns, nine rows. And for the format, four rows combined together. Here, five rows combined together. So we can combine the first four rows together. Merge cell, and this one is a uh, 7Z. So you may align them in the middle. Table property. Here, actually, when you choose it, let's see over here. It's center vertically. Here is 7Z. And that uh, zip here. Merge the cell, cells, yeah, zip. This is a zip file, a zip archive. Now the method, you can put it here. It looks like it's better we add one more row above to specify the information of each column. Here we say it's archive. Format and this one is the compression method. I'll create a method. Um, make it more readable. Compression method and this one is the that uh, compressed file size. Yeah, compressed file size. Compressed. Uh, compression ratio space saving. It looks like we need one more column. So we can insert a uh, column after. Okay, and this one is the compressed file size. Comp
compression ratio and uh, space saving. Okay, that's it. Now we need to put this compression method inside. For 7z, we put LZMA and uh, LZMA2 here, PPMD here, BZP2 here. here. So you need to fill this table by yourself. I just show two or three examples here. Deflate, deflate, deflate 64, LZMA, PPMD, BZP2, you just put them here in this, uh, for this archive, zip archive format. Now, let's do the correction to get these uh, values. Here, yeah, first let's try uh, 7z, this is a folder. Add to archive, and we choose 7z. And the compression ratio, we choose the highest one, ultra. Compression method, and choose LZMA to LZMA, and so on. So all others just leave them as default. So this is uh, 7Z archive format with the compression method LZMA. Uh, click OK. OK, I get this uh, archive file. And its size, right click, but property its size is 70 bytes. So we copy this one. Control we paste it here. And we need to specify the unit is a byte. Now the compression ratio, here it equals uncompressed size divided by compressed size. The uncompressed size, you can come here to see the uncompressed size is uh, this value, uncompressed size, and copy it. Add a statement here. We just say uh, the folder F, the size of, of folder F. The size of folder F is uh, so many uh, bytes. Right now, how do we calculate it? The compression ratio equals this uh, uncompressed number divided by this uh, compressed uh, number. So we can use a calculator. to do the calculation. Here is a calculation. It's a seven, three, one, nine, eight to six divided by one, seven, three, three, one, Nine. So we get uh, this uh, com compression ratio. Oops, it's uh, quite a, you'll see, the compression ratio is uh, quite high, 42 times. So keep it to a decimal number, 42.23, 42.23. And the space saving, the equals one minus this compressed size divided by this uncompressed size. So, which means is the inverse of this number. So we get this one, then we minus one. 
we get a negative number, we change it to positive number. Oops, that's a minus. So we change it to positive number is just 0 0.96976. Uh, Let's keep three uh, digits. So it would be a, wait a minute, we still need a one minus that number. So the next number will be just plus one. So we just plus one equals, so it would be 0 0.024, about 0 0.04. 0.024. So that's the way you complete this table. You can complete others by yourself. Zip. I just show show one more example. Here for the zip, we use this seven zip add to archive. And this time the archive format, I choose the zip. And the method, here we have a file possible method deflate or others just use the default. Now we click uh, one, one, one more thing, compression level is the ultra, the maximum one. Okay, now it looks good, we click okay. Okay, we have this uh, file and it's size is this one. File to zero A zero four. So we copy it, paste it in our table. Here is a compressed size. Now the compression ratio. Again, we we can do the calculation. You use this number divided by this number to get this compression ratio, and uh, use the formula to get the space saving. So this is the task one. This is a task one. Now for task two, for task two, download and install the file in encryption to a AS script, then create a tall T for the folder F above with a seven zip. So how do we create a tall with a seven zip? Here, this folder, we use 7 z add to archive. This time we are required to create a tor. Here, we choose tor as the archive format. Okay, now you see this uh, tor format. Lots of options are off. So we click, uh, okay, we, as we learned during the lecture, we know tor, there is no compression by default. Okay, this is a tall file, which has the size 7193. And this size is also about uh, here, it's also about uh, roughly this number here, but it's a little bit larger than that one. Okay, now we have this uh, tall file. In this uh, Task compression compress then encrypt versus encrypt then compress. The first one compress then encrypt. So we use a seven zip GUI or command line to apply all possible compression methods, compression algorithm onto the folder F above in our Kyle format seven Z and zip separately and using the highest compression level for each and keeping all other op options as default. Then encrypt the compressed uh, file with AES crypt journal table to compare all final encrypted files. And your table should contain nine possibilities similar to the task one. But this, this one, It's uh, compressed and uh, encrypted, then encrypted. So we can copy this table. Yeah. 
gonna see copy the table and I'm gonna we paste it here. So we need to add these numbers. And this one is a uh, compress then encrypt. Yeah, compress then encrypt. We already encrypted two examples, right? Encrypted two examples. We get two archives. Yeah, there are those two archives. So this first one, seven Z, encrypt it. We use this AES encrypt password. Type OK. So we get this uh, encrypted file and the size almost uh, the same as that uh, archive. Check its property. And the size is this one. You copy it. Come back and uh, put it here. This uh, compressed and encrypted file size. Then encrypted file size. Here we compare with this one. So the new one is a little bit, bit bigger, right? A little bit bigger. And you need to save some password information, encryption information. Why is a little bit bigger? So you know how to calculate this uh, compression ratio, space saving, use this number, and that un uncompressed size. For this uh, deflate, so you can just encrypt that file and uh, get the encrypted file. Yeah, the zip file, AES, encrypt, give it a password. Click on OK. Right now you see this file. Its size is also uh, roughly the same as that zip file. So it's a little bit, uh, it's a little bit bigger. So I copy this one. Then put it in this uh, table. So you know how to calculate uh, this compression, compression ratio and the space saving. So this the Subtask one or task two. Now subtask two. Here this one or this task two. So we can just copy this uh, table. Here copy the table and paste here. We need to complete all other cells of this copy. Didn't select it. Okay. Can you see? And we paste here. Now this time we call it this one. Encrypt, then compress. So copy it, come to here, encrypt, then compress. So we will change the name here. Encrypt, then Press. Remove these two numbers. And this one, we first in, encrypt the tar file, then use 7 zip GUI or command line to apply our possible compression method as in the above task. Okay, we can do it like this. F09. So we need to only encrypt it once, then we apply all those compression methods. This top file, we encrypt once. Let's say uh, set up a password. So 
So you can this encrypted file, you see it's uh, all of small java, like this one. Its size is almost the same as a power file, a little bit bigger. Now we can apply all those encryptions. For example, the first one, we encrypt, yeah, add to archive. Encrypt as uh, 7z with the arch most, the highest crash level, and LZMA or others just leave it as default and click OK. But uh, I think maybe we'd better give it a good name. How do we distinguish between this uh, compression method, right? We can add a LZMA dot 7z. So in our example, just demonstrate to add the compression method into the file name to make it more readable. And now you check the size. Oh, this size is larger than the uncompressed file. So property, yeah, you copy this size. And the paste here. It encrypt then compress file. For this uh, zip, other cells, you know how to calculate. Now, I, for that zip, here we compress this encrypted file with the seven zip, add to archive. This time we choose a zip and the highest compression level method deflate was lived as default. So it makes the name readable. We add a dot default dot zip. Okay, again, you see it's a size is roughly this uh, um, compressed file size. So check the property, we copy it. Go back, paste it here. Then you know how to calculate this uh, values. And you will see this compression ratio now this time is less than one. For example, let's try this one. This number in the calculator, let's clear this calculator to see whether I can paste it here. So I paste it here. Then divide. Then divide by the uncompressed file size, but this time the uncompressed file size for this encrypt then comprise the uncompressed size is that encrypted encrypted tall file size. So is this one. Of the size. This is the encrypt, then compress. Yeah, put it here. And also, we want to divide by the number, right? So we paste here. And we paste equals. So you see the number is uh, larger than one. If we leave just uh, two decimal point, it's about 1.00. So the space saving would be zero, which means there's no space saving. And then you can complete other cells. Maybe in this case, we, uh, we need to keep more digits here, keep more digits. The minus one, We get a number like this, which means we need more space 
So it's okay to put a zero here. But to make it more readable, maybe we use uh, this number. Yeah, we copy it. But it's one minus this number. So we we'll, we'll need to put a mac minus the negative symbol in front of the number, which means actually it wastes more space instead of save space. So then uh, for other cells, you can fill other cells by yourself. So this is uh, a subtask two, subtask three or task two. The last uh, task, task three, backup system logs periodically. Yeah, in this task, we are required to create a batch file to copy all EVTX files whose name contains security to a backup folder. Then compress these uh, EVTX files. Then uh, delete them using a uh, 7-zip. Compress them first, then delete. Delete those uh, EVTX files. Second, we set up a scheduled task to do the backup daily. The backup copy, then compress. So first, let's uh, try the command line to see how to do it. We can create a folder called backup. Backup in our lab zero nine. Now inside this uh, backup, for batch file, I think uh, maybe some of you didn't learn uh, how to create a batch file. Some of you learned how to create. It's a uh, taught inside uh, IDS 372. Okay, now in this uh, backup folder, I press Shift key, right click, then open a PowerShell window here. In this PowerShell window, I can type command. As it says, uh, we need a batch file. So we type cmd to run the command prompt. First, we copy all those UVTX files whose name contains uh, security. So we learned during the lecture, now where are those UVTX files? We know all those UVT X files they are under system set to uh, win UVTX and uh, logs. Oops, it looks like uh, it's not on this place. Let's have a try. I forgot about that. In our local disk windows, system set to the uh, UVTX or Win UVTX. Here it looks like uh, there is no UVTX we have. Scroll down to see our look. Here we have Win UVT, called Win UVT, not Win UVTX. Then come to this uh, folder. We have these uh, log files. So we just copy this one. So it asks us to copy those files. Copy, oops, paste here. Copy all those files contains security, this word. So we copy them to our backup folder. Oops, copy is a Linux command. We need to type it completely. In Windows, it's called copy. Okay, now you see 18 files copied. And all these files, you'll see that it means name, it contains security, security, and so on. Now the second type, second step, it will compress these EVTX files 
then delete them using 7-zip. Actually, 7-zip has a convenient option. Can be used to delete those files after com compression. So where, where is our 7-zip? Defend the C program files and 7-zip, 7-zip. We use the add. Uh, add command to query the archive. Let's query it, just query the backup. Now, it asks us to create a file backup daily. So if we use the same name, that will be overwritten. So how could we create a file name with the, the date? With the date. So let's uh, first create this back up file first. So in the later we will figure out how to uh, rename rename this file name. So the local turn for the EVTX. The start of the EVTX, which means all the EVTX uh, files under this back up uh, folder. So you can uh, check 7 z it's a uh, documentation to find uh, those options. Yeah, how do we use this uh, 7Z? For example, 7Z format, support for, supported format, general information, and so on. Yeah, you can check how to use it. For example, this. Uh, command line version syntax. Okay, here you can see uh, this of this uh, syntax. How do we use it? You can check this uh, by yourself. The compression level Let's see where we could set up the uh, compression level. Execution. Here we check this stuff to have a look which one we can specify. Here we can specify method here, dash M compression method. These are those commands, add, bench, delete, extract, list. We use A as an add, it creates the archive. And uh, let's check where we can set up. SLP, SLT. Okay, it looks like that. Let's check this uh, method first inside this method to see what options do we have here. There are so many uh, options. This is uh, quite tedious to read. Let's uh, just try 7G example. 7G Examples command line. So you can find uh, lots of command line about how to use this uh, 7Z. Here we will see uh, some examples. 7Z, but the name is 7Z, right? Dash T, dash T 7Z. Means uh, what does T seven Z means? I think is that means all kind of file for format is seven Z. Is okay? We use this uh, extension to represent it. Then is the, the files to be all count. So which means our syntax uh, is good. Maybe uh, we can add a dash T seven Z as a type. 
Here, if we want to find the compression level, let's see whether we have option to specify that compression level. Control F level, compression level. We can use a dash MX. Let's use the highest level. This is dash MX9 ultra. So we can specify like this. Dash T is our archive type. This is 7Z MX9, uh, the highest level. And that method is okay, just let the 7Z choose its default conversion method. Then followed by this archive name and followed by this uh, all those EVTX files. We want to find an option to delete. Uh, delete those uh, EVTX files after we after we compressed them. Okay, we didn't see an option. Let's uh, remove. Remove certain files. Uh, I think I where I saw the option to remove the files once we don't need them. Let's try. Control F. No remove. Delete. That always travels on sub directories. Here we have a SDR, delete the files after including it to the archive. So this is an option we are looking for, dash SDR. So we can add a dash SDR here, dash SDR, then press an enter. Okay, you see everything is okay. And let's use the our back. Here you see only this backup of 7Z is left here. All those EVTX files are deleted. We can use 7Z L to list its contents. Backup of 7Z. But this is, uh, oops, it does not recognize, recognize the 7Z. We need the complete, the complete uh, path or the absolute path of this 7Z list uh, backup to 7z. So you see the archive contains all those EVTX files we copied to this backup folder. So this uh, option uh, looks good. Here, we complete this uh, to this task, create a batch file. Now we know the, the command. That, with the command, we know how to create a batch file. But before that, how do we uh, create a file with the name condense the date? Date. Here we use the date command. You will see a command like this. The calendar date is uh, this one, and so on. We don't want to change the date, so we can check the date command. Is a uh, help how to use it with this T. Just output the current date. So date forward slash t. Then we get this Wednesday and also this date. So we have this stuff. How do we put this one into our file name? That we we need, uh, let's uh, Google it, how to uh, add the date into our file name with a uh, command line. Let's say uh, Windows, command, command line, uh, create file with a uh, name here, 
calendar date in Snap. Actually, you can see uh, this uh, web page is doing a similar task as us. So we may use this way, set this uh, variable date equals this one. in a variable by using like this. So we need to create a variable. And that variable used as a file name. Or we may use uh, something like this. Is it even faster than this one? Okay, let's say this one is a neat trick. It says that it expands something like this. Okay, now let's uh, set this one to have a look. What does this one looks like? Actually, that uh, this uh, way is, we need to remove those forward slash. So here we use this set date equals percent date okay this is a string substitute here you substitute this forward slash with this uh, dash and when you learn at s372 you will learn this stuff then we can echo that uh, date variable and you see it becomes uh, this one. So this uh, loose code is uh, can be used as a file name. So now we can create a batch script here. We create a batch script inside this backup folder. Oops, uh, all other files are deleted in our backup folder. Oh, yes, those are UBTX files. Okay, now I want to create a text file and I call it backup.bat batch file. Then we can edit this one. Using the command we just used first, we Use a variable set it equals this part, just copy and paste. Copy and paste here. Then that is 7z. Before 7z to compress those files, we have a copy files. Right, we use this copy command. That is a copy command to copy everything into our calendar folder. After that, we use that 7z compress all the UBT files. After compression, we delete them. I will copy this line and I paste it here. So this is a compress command. We need to change the name now. We change this backup to the name. Let's call it backup followed up by those uh, date here, followed by with the date 
So we can put this update inside here. Control V, save it. So this is the way how do we uh, create a file, backup file with the calendar date inside its file name or carry all those uh, event loggers contains security in their file name. So we can run this batch file to have a try. So we close it. To see a country under that backup folder, I have two files. Delete this backup dot seventy. Delete it. Now I run on this backup dot bat. Okay, you you see those output right. First, it copy everything here, then. It compress it, then it remove all the EVT X files. So this uh, file, the name is, is okay. Maybe you can add a, a empty space between this backup and this uh, uh, day, Wednesday. But it's it's acceptable, acceptable like this. So we complete this uh, backup dot bat, the batch file. Now, for subtask two of this task three, set up a schedule task to do the backup, copy and compress daily. So we only need to set up a schedule task to call our batch file, right? Just call our batch file, then that's good. And we know this batch file is under this uh, folder. So maybe we need to uh, edit, the, which means before we do everything, we come to this folder, CD to our folder. This is this uh, folder, Control C, come here, paste here. Maybe uh, that is a good way to make them more readable with that as uh, Back DLR, this is a backup directory equals this one. And we paste here. Then we CD into this. Uh, Back there, Connect, save it. So this uh, may look more readable. Before we set up a task schedule, we may uh, test this one again to have a look. Here, now uh, please. Uh, Watch this uh, window. You put it here, and you will see what happened inside. We call that backup dot bat. Okay, it uh, looks good. Now we want to schedule. Uh, Task. Schedule tasks or task schedule. Uh, how do we create a new uh, schedule task? Here, create task, a basic task, and, and so on. Create a task. And this, we just create a Backup daily. We can add some descriptions. We want to backup. Oops. 
backup load files with security in their names and run only when user logged in or run whether user is logged in on or not you can set these uh, security options based on your need here you configure for let's configure for this uh, windows server 2019 this is uh, operating system i'm using and run only when user is uh, logged on Yeah, the location. So what does this uh, location mean? Trick. When you create a task, you can specify the conditions that will trigger the task. So let's have a look. So these are the conditions. We can run in the uh, daily. Recur every day, and what time to do to run this task? When we are, there are some advanced settings, for example, when we expire and so on. So let's choose usually the midnight. Let's start synchronize across time zone. Now we choose the night. Okay, it looks like this. Every day, recur every day. Run, start at the midnight. But currently I want to test it. So I would like to specify it uh, at an earlier time. So let's choose it. Uh, This is a trigger to start this task. Now it's 8.45 p.m. I want to, uh, let's complete all these settings and we will come back to change this trigger. Click uh, the actions. So what actions are we, are, we are going to do? We are going to uh, copy and back compress those EBT files condition so we can check this stuff to see whether you need to set based on your need. Settings. Okay, these are the most important thing action and triggers. Other options you may check, uh, read, check and read by yourself. So the action, we want to start a program. Send an email to the mask. We want to start a program. And that program or script, so why it is. And uh, arguments start in. So this is nice, right? Start in which place? So we can choose that program. It's on our left now. Backup. This is backup.bat. Now start in is optional because we wanted to have a CD into our backup folder. Maybe it's, a, it's a more reliable, so it's good to put, start in this uh, folder. Click OK. Yeah, start a program. OK, there's a task. But now it's scheduled, but it's not triggered. Oops, it's a Windows stuff. So our task. Is not triggered now. So where could we modify our task to let the triggered ones? Is all your task uh, scheduler task status? I want to find uh, find my created task. 
to see what it is I just created, right? Okay, there should be under this place. Welcome, Microsoft. Windows. Okay, all, all Windows uh, tasks. So what the task I just created? It's here. Uh, task scheduler library is a backup daily. Now I want to change the trick condition. Here, let's uh, trick it at 9.50 p.m. And I click OK. OK, OK. Then we will come back to have a look when it's triggered. You can see it is a uh, overview task scheduler and this task status. When the time is up, let's see where it's still up here. Run result, run start, run end, task name. Okay, let's just wait uh, one minute. Oops, it's uh, 9.50, it's 8.50, my bad. Eight fifty. Click OK to the look. Okay, now you see it's triggered. And now I'm in completed. So come to this uh, backup. It's created and you check the time, 8, 50. And that other one is, uh, is overwritten. OK, it looks this uh, worked. OK, I would like to remove this task because I don't want to do it uh, every day. These three disabled settings. We only need to remove this trigger condition. Delete. Then it will not be triggered. OK, that's it. Now we completed our task three. For this review question in task two, which method so oh, these two methods are compressed then encrypt and uh, encrypt then uh, compress has a higher compression ratio than Y. And we discussed uh, during the lecture, so I think you can allow yourself. Because those are uh, encrypted files, they look like a white noise. They don't, they don't show uh, redundancy patterns. That's why that when we compress them, almost uh, nothing is compressed. Okay, that's it.